Hi again guys and welcome to the 103rd episode of B-Road Ballers on Gran Turismo 6 in particular and this time we're featuring a car that we have actually discussed before, the Hyundai Click Type R. We discussed this car relatively briefly in the Dark series, a series for vehicles which deserve more recognition than they currently get, at least in my opinion of course, and this car has the distinction of being in effect, if you don't include carts, the cheapest race car in the game. It only costs 10,000 credits, which, even if it isn't a race car, that would make it one of the cheapest cars anyway, but the great thing that distinguishes the Hyundai Click from many other cars of that kind of price is the fully tuned potential which it has. This car is a very strong base for tuning. And you can see that very quickly. The engine is only a 1.5 litre, it's front wheel drive as you'd safely assume, but when you turbocharge that engine, you're looking at specs which can rival even some higher end JDM cars. Not when they're tuned of course, but in stock form. For instance, this car fully tuned has 276 horsepower, which is of course the quoted power of cars like the NSX, the RX-7, the Skyline and some others as well. Now in reality of course those cars would often put out more than that, but that was the legal number which they would claim. This car puts out that same number, that's really good numbers for such a tiny cheap hatch to be running. As far as weight as well, it's only an 830 kilo car, and to put that into perspective, that's exactly the same as a Mazda 787B, which is a pretty good performance car, to say the least, and one which any Japanese car fan will know very well. Now, obviously, it's not going to have the kind of performance of something like a Skyline or a 787B, but having numbers which can at least be similar to those cars gives it a good amount of potential to work with, especially given that the PP level is only 484, which is relatively modest given that combination of high power and low weight. Even the horsepower per ton can legitimately rival some sports cars at 333. So again, for 10 grand you get a huge amount of potential with this vehicle. But the question of course is, can it turn that really good on paper spec into actual performance? Can it actually win races? Is it a car that's worth buying? Or like many of the other hatches or vehicles in general on Gran Turismo, is it a car which isn't necessarily bad, but it's more of a secondary option rather than leading the pack? There are a lot of cars like that, they're perfectly good, sometimes they're even great, but the fact that they're not necessarily the best means that a lot of people just won't get around to using them. So is this one of those cars? Well, to some degree, I would say this is kind of a hidden gem. There are some people who know what this car is capable of. It's very quick, it's great through corners. You do have to be careful sometimes of curbs, as is often the case with hatchbacks and some other cars as well, which have relatively high heights to their roof in comparison to the length and width of the car. It can flip over. If you push it hard through a corner, I'm not going to lie about that, it can do that. But, generally speaking, the handling is very good. It copes with the power and the low weight combination, which is a good thing, of course, but having lower weight does mean that a front-wheel drive car doesn't have as much weight grounding the tyres and getting that power down, so it can sometimes lead to more torque steer and more wheel spin, but it doesn't really do that in this car, not severely, anyway. It's very easy to drive, it's superb in terms of how beginner-friendly it is, and it's a joy to work with. It's definitely quick, and although the PP level is perhaps a tiny bit too high, I would say, for its own good, I would say maybe 478-ish would have been more accurate to this car, but still, that's not far off the 484 that they set it at, so that's pretty good. You can quite easily detune this car, or just tune it up less to hit 450 PP, 475, or even lower if you want to, and it's got a lot of potential at that level. It has the distinction, as I said earlier, of being a super cheap, super beginner friendly race car, technically a race car, but as far as I can remember, I think you can also use this one in just regular hatchback racing, and that's a big advantage to have, because you in effect get the best of both worlds, a car which is kind of a race car, but is still eligible for road racing as well. That's pretty good, there are very few cars which can offer that on Gran Turismo, or on any racing game for that matter, apart from say homologation supercars from the Le Mans. So overall this is a car which isn't going to dominate everything, 
in the hot hatch class. It's not a perfect car by any means, but what it does offer is a very impressive overall spec sheet for the price and very good performance for the price. 10 grand is such a low entry level for a vehicle like this that you can buy it super early on in the game and it has really, really good potential for drivers who just don't have the money to buy bigger, better, say 40, 50, 60 grand hatches or something like a HPA Golf, for instance, or a Focus RS. If you can't afford that, especially if you can't afford to buy it and fully tune it, this is a car which you can get very early on in the game and it will serve you really well. Of course, you can't use it in every race, there are some which it won't be eligible for, but for those that it can, such as hatches, front wheel drive events, it's a really good car. And although there are definitely some people, I'm sure some of you guys included, who do respect this car and love what it's capable of for the price, there's still a lot of people who have just never even tried it. So in that regard, it's kind of a sleeper car in that sense, which again is one of the reasons why I featured it in the Dark series. So, if you haven't checked out the Hyundai Click Type R, I would definitely recommend doing so. It can even give stuff like the Polo GTI a pretty good run for its money. So that's pretty impressive as well. There are relatively few cars that can do that. So, as I said, I'd definitely recommend checking it out. It's not exactly a lot of money to fork out to try it. And that's it for this pick overall. So I'll see you guys next time. And as always, thanks for watching.